So in this video, we're going to review the Asus Top Gaming GT301. We're going to show you what we like and what we not so like about this case. And yes, if you want to support our channel, you can buy this case or our filming equipment in the description box below. Click on the Amazon affiliate links and help us. A little cashback goes a long way. So first off, I'm going to start on this side here. Full tempered glass, top to bottom, right over here. So it's held off by two captive thumb screws down here. So one thing good, you're not going to lose the screws. Now, the one thing that's rather unique about this case that I feel is not only do you have this open mesh large airflow thing going on in front here, which is, seems to be the trend now, but you also have these little velcro straps going right across in a crisscross pattern. So this kind of gives me the vibes of, you know, one of those LAN party PCs, you know, before gaming laptops were a thing, if you wanted something powerful enough to play CS at your friend's house, you took your computer, you strapped on some straps, and then you held it on like that to your friend's house to blast CS until 5am in the next morning. Should yeah. Use the straps to carry the PC. Yeah, these guys, however, yeah, they don't look strong enough to carry a PC, so please do not use them to actually carry the case. If you are wondering, can the strap be removed they can you can just untie here untie here but they are not easy to get back on so that's why we've elected not to it uh the front io is pretty typical for chassis in this price range of hgd 109 you've got two usb 3 ports a button in the middle a reset switch and rather notably a single combo mic slash headphone jack which is a nice change from the traditional dual separate uh, outputs then the one thing that is of note, you have one button down here with a LED icon down here. I'll get into what that does in a bit of a while. Along to here, same thing, two captive thumb screws. Yeah, turn off. Okay, right, with the back panel open, what you will notice is that space is at kind of like a premium in this case. So with one notable example being the PSU section itself. So right, just to give you a hint of an example, this is Seasonic GX750 modular power supply. At 140mm in length, that's pretty typical. And you can see if you get a power supply like that, it does pretty okay. So you've got plenty of clearance between here and the hard disk gate to manage and that kind of thing. But anything longer than this, you might run into issues either managing the cable or it just isn't gonna fit. Of course, you could solve the problem by getting a cage out, but that means you won't be able to mount any 3.5 inch inch devices at all. To keep that in mind. The other notable thing that you will see when you are coming right over here is that you see what looks like an RGB hub controller thing going on here. So remember there was a little button on the top here that looks LED like that's connected to here. So it's an RGB controller slash splitter. The controller part being that let's say you have one of those motherboards with no ARGB 5 volt out with no controls of that sort, this will handle any ARGB devices in this chassis. The patterns are rather simple. They're not going to be as fancy as anything that will come out from any motherboard software like uh, Asus Aura Sync, that kind of thing, but it's better than nothing. The other thing of note that I think is very good here is that you have six 5 volt ARGB outputs here, three of which are occupied by the three fans in front, and they have left you a remaining three down here, which is good. So if let's say you've decided to configure this fan with six ARGB fans in total, three in front, the ones that are already included, two on the top and the one behind. So you can fit up all six fans without the need for additional splitters, extenders or what may help you. Yeah, the one thing of note also is that the hard disk drawers are taller. So if you have a three and a half inch device, all you have to do is just put it in and then just plug, you're done. No need to find the screws and all that to mount. Do take note however that if you use this for 2.5 inch devices like SSDs, yeah, you'll probably have to pop a couple of screws in here to hold it here. But those are pretty generic uh, normal screws, so not really an issue. So these are the parts that show the three and a half inch drive. So where are the places to put your two and a half inch SSDs. So there are two places. You have one down here and the other one actually sit right over here. So you may be asking the positioning is a bit odd. Does it look like you can reposition it? The answer seems to be no. If you have two 2.5 inch SSDs, that's where they're going to go. One behind here, one in front here. The one of the things of note with a uh, chassis with compact dimensions such as this, especially with regards to length, is that something is going to give. One of that is your GPU clearance. Now, this wasn't really a problem back then when this chassis was introduced, because back then most of the Touring AIB GPUs could fit inside there with ease. However, with the average length of Ampere AIB cards being quite a fair bit longer now. That may pose a problem because if I take my measuring tape down here, for me hitting the fan all the way up to the slot down here, I have a measurement of about exactly 33 cm. 
So if let's say you are looking at something like the RTX 3080 or 3090 Tough, that's not really a problem. From what we've seen so far from the dimensions on the website, the ROG Strix 3080 and 3090 also shouldn't be a problem because they are below 33cm, but you may be cutting it a bit close. The other thing that's going to give would be your options for cooling. Especially if you're looking at liquid cooling for either your CPU, your GPU, or both. Your options for radiator mounts is a single 120mm to the back and say a 240 or a 360 to the front. But a 360, however, due to the damage, you will have to take out the hard disk cage to fit a 360. So take it as the maximum you can go in front is a 240. However, if you put your radiator here, you're further going to shorten your GPU clearance to below 30 cm, which means a lot of uh, MPU GPUs aren't going to go inside there at all. So do take note of that. Then you may be asking, oh, that's not really a problem. Maybe I'll just mount the radiator on the top. Ah, but then you're going to run into another problem. The thing is that you, if you see the clearance from here, uh, the motherboard, the IOH here to the top of the case, isn't really particularly a lot. It's very narrow. Well, this is not going to be a problem if let's say all you're going to do is you're going to mount fans on top and that's pretty much it. This is what's going to happen if let's say you try to top mount a radiator. So this is my motherboard, ROG Strix uh, B550XE. So as you can see, I mounted a pair of G-Skill Trident Z Neos on the board. They are not the tallest aftermarket RAM around, especially for RGB models, but at least this will show you what I mean. So let's get the board in. So now you've mounted everything in, snap, shove the radiator in. So what you can see here is it looks like it fits, but I wouldn't call this a good fitment at all. I mean, it's the modules are practically hitting the fans. This AI is not one with a particularly thick radiator. If you're one of those with, with thicker rats, already not going to clear. So now, even if in this case, you can get the RAM to clear, you're going to run into another problem. The B550 XE I have over here has VRM heat sinks right on the top. Given that a lot of motherboards today have larger and larger heat sinks on tops, yeah, these aren't particularly really that big. And as you can see, they're hitting the radiator itself. Do not attempt to try to mount the radiator on top. If you want to mount anything on top, just mount fans. And yeah, like I said, you can try to put the radiator on the front, but depending on your radiator, you're going to cut even more clearance for your GPU. So if I were to do a build in this chassis, sir, I would highly advise going for, let's say, a compact 120mm air cooler, maybe one with a push-pull for higher-end CPU, rather than go for any form of liquid cooling solution. It's too cram and not really worth the trouble to try to get it to work in here. There's one more feature of note that I like to mention, is this little thing over here. So what does this do? So you put it here, there's a little screw down here, so you mount it here. Let's say you're done playing your game, so you just hang your it's right over here. For some people who have a very bad habit of tossing their headphones wherever they please after their gaming session is done and then after that not quite remembering where they put it, it's always good to have one nice place for your headphone to just sit here for you to be ready to use again at a later time. It's a good thing, this is a very unique feature especially for a case in this price range. Okay, there are a couple of niggling points in this case that I do want to mention. One is a relatively minor one, the PSU shop doesn't seem to be removable, it's riveted so... Right, no go. You can't have an open section over here. The other point is not so much with the chassis itself. While you have three very nice ARGB fans in front, the small problem I have is that you can't buy these fans separately from ASUS or whoever else there is. This might give you a little bit of an aesthetic issue. Like let's say you want to have these three fans which are already provided in front and you want to have uh, three more fans down here which are matching in design, patterns, what may have you. But looking at this design thus far, it may not be too much of a big problem actually because the front design as it is obscures quite a fair bit of the details of the three front ARGB fans. So generally speaking, I don't think it's going to make too much effort to actually find three fans that do match up. You'll probably just have to look for some fans with 120mm with the ARGB LEDs in the center. Seems like a very small point but when you're playing in this price range, it's always good to try to not have your customer have to swap out the included fans and spend more money just to have them all the exactly the same model and design. 
Okay, uh, one more thing that I think it will be nice to have on this case would be maybe a USB Type-C front here. But again, uh, given the price range that this chassis fits into, probably you're going to use a mid-range motherboard on this. And as you can probably see across uh, ASUS uh, mid-range motherboard range for both Intel and AMD, the vast majority of them do not have the USB Type-C front head on them anyway. So this chassis not having the USB Type-C front is kind of a mute point. Yeah, it's something to take note of. Uh, what do you think of the case so far? To sum up my feels of this case itself, the one word would be surprising. When I heard that this case was going to be launched by ASUS, first thing that came to my mind was, yeah, it was going to come in like SGD 150, 160, because yeah, it's an ASUS chassis. Mm -hmm. and even at that price range, I think it will compare quite favorably actually, despite the ASUS premium. But at SGD 109, I am quite surprised to say that, yeah, this chassis is quite competitive for what it offers at that price range. And it has extra nice points like the phone hanger right over here. I would recommend this case, especially to someone who wants to get into an ASUS team rig, but doesn't want to blow his entire bank account. I kind of really like this case. It's really grown on me, actually. I kind of like this. Yeah, we're going to get to build in this thing, right? Yeah, and that'll be in another video. But yeah, so if you like our review of this case, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Yeah, and write down in the comments what you think of this case. So as Gordon mentioned, we're going to do a build for this case. There'll be another video, so make sure to come back to our channel for that video. So goodbye.